Today I'm going to make a curry. So what is curry? Basically, curry is a sauce made by using a complex combination of spices. The word curry was probably used by the British when India was part of the British Empire and it might be derived from the Tamil Indian word curry meaning spice sauce. British soldiers brought curry to the West when they returned from a tour of duty in India. Curry powder was probably invented by Indian spice merchants for the returning soldiers to bring back to the UK. Curry powder is unknown in India and the closest you are likely to come to it, ready-made, is garam masala. Garam means warm or hot and masala means a mixture of spices. The curry we eat in the UK, even in Indian restaurants, is not anything that would be recognised in India. The curry we eat here has been adapted to British tastes. You can curry anything from armadillos to zebra, from fish to fowl, from animal to vegetable, and even eggs. Apart from the variety of foods you can put into a curry sauce, there is also an infinite variety of curry sauces. Chinese curry is totally different to Indian curry, and then there is Thai green curry, and so on. It all depends on the spices used and the combination of those spices. Then there is the heat, which is again spice dependent. My sister makes a curry that is almost inedible. It is so hot. I've never seen the point in that. If you want that intensity of heat, and go and chew on a chilli pepper. I don't see how anybody can taste anything once they have burnt the taste buds off their tongue. I used to make my own curry powder or garam masala but I use shop bought these days. If you want to try making your own there is a recipe for garam masala printed in this video description. Anyway let's get on with this cooking malarkey. I'm going to use chicken for my curry for six people. In the video description you will see that I have broken the ingredients down for a single portion so you can just multiply up by the number of portions you are going to make. For six people you will need three medium sized onions, diced, butter or oil for frying the onions, 1.2 kilograms, about two and three quarter pounds of meat. Whatever meat you are going to use needs to be cut into bite-sized pieces. Poultry should be skinned. Beef, pork and lamb should be coated in flour which has been seasoned with salt and pepper. 12 tablespoons of curry powder. 12 tablespoons of oil for frying. 1200 millilitres, 2 pints of stock. 12 tablespoons, about 100 grams, of plain flour to thicken the sauce. This is not part of the seasoned flour for coating beef, etc. 1.5 teaspoons of salt. 6 teaspoons, 30 millilitres, of tomato puree. 6 heaped teaspoons of sugar. Spoon measurements are level spoons and not heap spoons except for sugar. Fry the diced onions in a pan until soft. Put to one side. Put the oil in a saucepan. and fry the meat a few pieces at a time until sealed all over. Lift out with a slotted spoon and set to one side. Add the curry powder to the saucepan
Mix it into the oil and fry gently for a couple of minutes. Add more oil if needed. Remove from the heat and allow to cool slightly. Add the flour to the saucepan a bit at a time, stirring until all the flour is absorbed without any lumps. Return to the heat and fry for two minutes. Remove from the heat and allow to cool slightly. Very slowly add half the stock, stirring all the time to make a smooth paste. Then continue adding the remaining stock. Add the salt, sugar, onions, and tomato puree. Stir well. Return to the heat. At this point you have a choice. You can either simmer the sauce for 30 minutes then cool and freeze it in the amounts that you are likely to use or you can add cooked meat and simmer for 30 minutes then either eat it or cool it and freeze it in portions or you can add uncooked meat. Add the meat and simmer gently for 30 to 60 minutes or until the meat is cooked through. Stir frequently. Leave for 24 hours for the meat to marinate. Serve with rice and side dishes of your choice like poppadoms, naan bread and mango chutney. I allow 100 grams, about 4 ounces of rice per person. Leftover curry can be frozen for later use. After freezing, defrost overnight in a fridge, then reheat to boiling point and simmer for about 5 minutes or until it is thoroughly heated all the way through. Curry sauce is great for using up leftover meats, especially turkey at Christmas, or any other Sunday roast. If you are going to use cooked meat, 
just make the sauce up to the point where you add the salt, sugar, onions and tomato puree and stir well. Add the cooked meat, then cover and simmer the sauce gently for 30 minutes, stirring frequently. Make a batch of curry sauce and put it in the freezer. Freeze it in the amounts that you are likely to use. To reheat, defrost overnight in the fridge, then reheat to boiling point and simmer while stirring for about 5 minutes or until it is thoroughly heated all the way through. One tip, curry stains. So try to keep a set of containers and utensils just for cooking, storing and freezing curry. This is a basic sauce that you can add any meat to, but it can be refined to suit whatever meat you are using. For instance, use a beef stock for beef, etc. Add half a tablespoon of vinegar per person to a beef curry, and so on. Enjoy your meal.